हरि ओम तत्सत वेलकम टू स्वामी ज्योतिर्मयनंद सोसाइटी अर जर्नी टू सेल्फ रियलाइजेशन प्लीज सब्सक्राइब फॉर द मिस्टिकल मीनिंग्स एंड टू एंजॉय डेली सत्संग वी आर करेंटली एक्सप्लोरिंग द बुक गुरु भक्ति योगा ऑथर्ड बाय स्वामी शिवानंद जी महाराज ऑफ डिवाइन लाइफ सोसाइटी ऋषिकेश इंडिया एंड नरेटेड बाय माई सेल्फ स्वामी निखिलानंदा ऑफ ज्योतिर्मयनंद सोसाइटी In today's satsang, we are starting with chapter eight, cardinal notes on Guru Bhakti, the content of spiritual teaching, service of the Guru who is a liberated one, the study of the books which are written by him, and meditation on his holy form is the golden medium to develop Guru Bhakti. So, that is the essence. serving 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 the guru with no expectations his grace is the highest expectation that comes through his blessings in the form of his grace and when you do that with sincerity and dedication studying the books following the teachings these saints are extremely rare in today's world today's material world in this kali yuga they are called jivan mukt jivan mukt means liberated while in the physical body therefore it is a golden opportunity for disciples to congregate to learn from such gurus listen to their satsang and just like in contact with magnet the iron filings also get the magnetic properties in the same way when we come in association with these liberated sages and saints we evolve at a very fast pace and if we are sincere then liberation is very much possible in this very life but it has to be done with patience faith and humility the disciple who runs after name fame power wealth and sexuality cannot cultivate true devotion to the lotus feet of the guru he keeps getting distracted by the various itches of the world and thus the sense <coughs> pleasures take over but a sincere disciple suppresses those urges he understands that that is simply the nature of the senses and he overcomes them with his discipline tapasya and he moves forward the field of education is extremely wide and the scope of acquiring knowledge is infinite that the need of the guru is inevitable that is not even a question when for simple little things how to run a computer how to earn a living how to become successful in this very life so many worldly things we need experts and yet to the most complex thing which we cannot see know observe and have all kinds of opinions that we want to do without a guru <laughs> that is such a error on most people's parts and they cannot be blamed because to a great extent some of the gurus are themselves ignorant they are the blind leading the blind but those are not real gurus like i always remind you wherever there is true gold there is more fake gold because it is cheap it shines brighter and people can afford it so that's what they do real gold is expensive and therefore find a guru who is real not fake otherwise on this path it will not help you how do you find a real guru by becoming a real disciple if you become a real disciple then nothing in the world can stop you god arranges for you the proper guru and he will come and transform your life from within the tetriya upanishad says now about the knowledge the preceptor is the first form preceptor the guru is the first contact of the disciple in the form of god the disciple is the last form so the knowledge is the link between the two see from it's like a chain from the guru to the disciple and the knowledge flows 
through the instruction that creates a link between the guru and his disciple and this is known as the field of knowledge or paravidya most people are stuck in worldly knowledge only how to become successful how to become famous how to become rich all that is okay but that is not the sole purpose of your life or for your living or for coming to this earth it is something deeper so many people put 5 year strategic plans 10 year strategic plans okay those are good what about your life strategic plan what about your plan after death where would you go what would you do what kind of packing is needed for that think on those things also so katha upanishad says the self which is being taught over in various ways is not easily known when taught by a man of inferior intellect see the words are the same anybody can read them bhagavad gita so many people read but do they really understand the deeper meaning do they really implement it in their life no it misses it because the real essence it's like milk that has to be churned for it to become butter it will not automatically become butter thus effort is required and thus a guru disciple relationship is required and when the same words come from someone who has not experienced it who doesn't live it they will sound hollow they will sound hypocritical and that is no way to live that is no way to be a guru all these teachers and only they know who they are if they are simply preaching and teaching to the public to the masses but not following the teachings in their own personal life are simply downgrading themselves in god's eyes the public may love them they may like their entertainment style or their preaching but that is not spirituality real spirituality is living it daily and doing what you say and saying what you do how many in your thought deed and action they should all be in harmony your words should be consistent don't say something in vain if you're not going to do something don't say i'll do it and then forget about it or not do it better not to say it but if you say it then you do it this is what was the essential principle during lord rama's Uh, lineage raghukul reet sada chali aayi pran jaye par vachan na jaye they would follow whatever word they had promised even if it meant death ending their life that's what happened to king dashratha with the two boons he had given to his um, evil minded queen the queen was actually good but her mind was corrupted by her maid servant mantra that's a separate story which we'll cover some other time but this mind is very fickle and thus it is important to stay away from just intellectual people but when taught by one who is established in brahman there is no doubt at all when you come into close contact with a true guru a true sage a true saint his words will ring true your life will start to become joyful you will feel a spring in your step you will feel connected and you also have to be sincere when both these things happen the true guru and the guru's grace comes then you know there is no more doubt in your mind that is your guru don't wait any longer hold on to his lotus feet and don't leave him in search of other gurus here there if you have found the nectar a reservoir of nectar why go here there looking for muddy water not needed anymore the self being subtler than the subtle is not to be obtained by mere intellectual gymnastics we can't get god through our eyes through our ears through our touch smell sight taste these are simply sense organs and god is beyond that gunatita 
So therefore, Guru Kripa alone can bestow knowledge. It's only Guru's grace. So hold on to your lotus feet of your Guru daily. And if you are emotional, if you have bhakti, devotion, keep your Guru's sandals in your heart and at your altar. Think of where you have come from, where you were before you came into contact with your Guru, how much you have evolved and grown. And then shed some tears at the Guru's lotus sandals in gratitude. That is when your consciousness will expand, your heart will expand and you will come closer and closer to God. Because Guru always looks for sincere disciples. Not one, many people can fake cry also, crocodile tears they say. Those are not the tears we are talking about. We are talking about sincere tears of depth, of love, of gratitude. So with this we conclude our satsang for today and we will continue this beautiful holy journey in tomorrow's satsang. Hari Om Tat Sat.